presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Dell in Texas. Hey, Dell, what's going on? Hey, Tom. How Thanks you doing, for man? My call. Great. Thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Appreciate it. I love your show. I just stumbled upon it probably, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And how'd you find us? I found you on YouTube. YouTube. That's a beautiful thing. Well, we appreciate you growling and prowling with us. Welcome to the Tiger family, man. Wow. I like it. Totally. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go 10 hours a day. We go 24 hours a day on the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's a TGIF, folks. Let's make it a great one. I start with the idea that nothing is impossible and everything can be done in the end. Mug it up! Let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 198, NASDAQ up 73, S&P is up 29, gold contract down $14.60, traded at $1,258 an ounce. Silver up 5 cents at $15.60 an ounce. Platinum down 10 bucks at $9.68 an ounce. Copper up 2 pennies at $2.24 a pound. Light sweet crude up 58 cents, $38.42 a barrel. Bonds, we have the 10-year note down 11 ticks. 12809, 30-year bond off one full point, nine ticks, plus nine ticks, 16103. King dollar, king dollar up 95 ticks at 96.15. The euro is down 17, trading out at 111, and the yen is trading at 113.74. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? Okay. So we take a look at the SPY. SPY trading out here up $2.85. We're at $202.39. Now, what we did out here yesterday is this. Yesterday, you went to $201.07. You did 156 million shares. You were pushing into the swing point of $201.35 or 129 million. Now, the definition of an ABC structure on the way up, folks, is that you have to take the B point out, have to take it out with volume. Your probability gets better that you get a full price projection. So we're, at, we're taking the B point out today. We wouldn't have the volume, however, because we need 129 million. That being said, uh, bottom line, I suspect we're going to get pretty close to it. And why? Because what happens is that when you do this in the most conservative way, which I do, whether they're going up or down, when you have something that's this close, the bottom line, if you want to be the most conservative, you're going to basically take the aspect, in this case, is that it ran into it, had the volume, you follow through with it, we'll see where this baby goes. But And, and I'm going to show you the only full ABC down that we do have, and this is why the correlation why I'm saying the ABC is up is still in place, is the 10-year bond. The 10-year note took it out. With volume yesterday, big time, the 10-year note wants to go to 126, which is a long way down compared to where you are. That's telling me the SPY is going to try to run up into this 209 area, which is just wild. The NQs. We'll have another shot with the NQs. This is what you have with the NQs. The NQs right now, the three Qs, um, they are challenging their, their swing point. They haven't, he hasn't made it yet. It's $106.35. We made $106.31. Um, volume, we're going to basically have decent volume. They're going to be probably about 27, 20, 28 million. Uh, that's on the daily. If we take this and we put all these on the weekly now, on the weekly, what you're going to have is that uh, last week we did 150 million. You're going to do about 160 this, this week. Bottom line, that's still a game for the Qs to get up to the 111 mark. Gold contract. What do we have with gold? Bottom line, gold made it higher high at 2 o'clock in the morning last night. We got up to 1287. Plenty of contracts. You've done 215,000 contracts. Gold is building costs of a higher price. Um, the gold equities, the silver equities, many of them are doing ABC structures all over the place. Uh, bottom line, they've been leading this whole charge higher. Uh, so uh, what you expect with gold, we got to a price point of 1287. 
You're at 12.57 right now. More than likely, uh, the beginning of the week, you'll see this trying to get back into 12.40, somewhere around there. We hit 12.37 before. It's going to be hard to break, to break it down. Why? Because of the way and the force that you have at the 12.36 to the 12.40 area. You're talking about 340,000 contracts, three separate days on the way higher. That silver, let's go take a look at silver because what has happened now is this, and this is what the metals market needs, folks. The silver market has finally caught a bid. And what we have with silver is that silver yesterday um, had some nice volume in it. We, what we did yesterday is we did uh, 63,000 contracts. You got the $15.66. Today we get the $15.77. We've done 42,000, so we'll, figure we'll do about 48,000. That's hanging right under two separate swing points. The first one being February 11th. The high of that swing is $16. The second one is on March 4th. The high of that is $15.80. That's building cause to get up into the $16 area from October. And that's what it needs, by the way, for the rest of these metals to basically take off and take off in a big way. Now, this is the confirmation. So if we go over to the 10-year note, the 10-year note took out a B point and took it out with volume, lock, stock, and barrel. Yesterday, we came down 1.6 million contracts. We we're taking out 1.5 million. The 30-year right now is trading at 128.10. Bottom line, this is an ABC structure to 126. That's only two points and 10 ticks. Two points and 10 ticks inside the bond market, folks, is a big number. Two points and 10 ticks will bring the 10-year, which had got as low as 1.7, 1.67 to be exact. Uh, we're at 1.97 right now. That'll bring that 10-year about 2.1, 2.2. That correlation, the correlation with that 10-year going down, that's another you know, correlation where I'm figuring out, guess what? Deviance is here. That market wants to go up. And it's, it's lining up also, by the way, um, for the Fed meeting and for option expiration next week, okay? So the volatility is going to stay in the market. Great trading market. Huge price springs, swings, huge, um, you know, consolidations. I mean, this consolidation is just a monster. Going over, we take a look at King Dollar. King Dollar still can't handle higher price. Uh, King Dollar is trading out at uh, $96.15. I got toasted and roasted yesterday uh, with volume. We did uh, 52,000 contracts. You know, when we go back to the last downdraft that was out there in February 3rd, you did 60,000 contracts, and then we tested those areas, which is really a mind blower, with 19,000. Bottom line, a uh, dollar wants lower price, and I expect where the dollar is building cars to, which is really going to be wild watching how this thing shakes out, um, is the swing low from August 24th. And that swing low is laying out there right now at, it's pretty intense, on the continuous contract is laying out there at $92.52. So it's a big number on the way down. This is Tom O'Brien, this is TFNN. You stay right there, folks. We'll be coming right back. And you can expect this market to run up into the close. Even though we're up like this, they're, they're going to run this market. Top side. Dow is up 204. Nasdaq's up 75. S&Ps are up 30. We're going to right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow up 197, NASDAQ up 74, S&P's up 29. As we do each and every Friday at 20 past the first hour, we get our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. And don't forget, folks, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at TFNN, we do live programming 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 in the evening. Tuesday, Thursday, 7 o'clock in the morning to 6 in the evening. All that programming, get right on your cell phone. Just put TFNN.com. On your browser, hit Tiger TV. You're going to get great audio. You're going to get great video. Steve does a great show every trading day, 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, no matter where you are in this great world of ours. That's 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Also, it's a great newsletter, Master in Probability. Now, the way you get it, go to TFNN, go to newsletters, go to trading newsletters. You can test drive that one month, absolutely free. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? ABCs, baby. ABCs. What an interesting week we have had here for trading. There's no doubt, man. There's, the, you know, volatility in spades and wide price spreads and something for everyone. I mean, that's the variety. If you have fast fingers, something for everyone. Yes. yes. Now, I don't know if you know this. On Wednesday, uh, Wednesday was the smallest ranging day from high to low in the S&P 500 since uh, Christmas Eve. Okay. So, <laughs> clearly, and then Thursday was the fireworks day. Yesterday was the fireworks day. Yeah. You know, truly something for everyone with regard to fast fingers out there. So, um, you know, been a, a heck of a trading week. Uh, uh, with regard to light sweet crude and its its absolute correlation to either an up close in the S and P 500, which is equaling an up close in light sweet crude, or really it's the other way around. Okay. Four four out of five days this week. Yeah. Three out of five last week, four out of five the week before that. So, you know, certainly something, you know, worth paying attention to, continuing to pay attention. It'll be interesting to see when and if that uh, correlation breaks. But, you know, when I look for clues as to what the market might do last week, we took a look at, at this uh, chart here. And uh, this happens to be uh, the analog chart that goes back over. It's really the one year cycle that is taking data over the last 84 years. Okay. And just seeing what the average uh, closes are on a daily basis. And that's the blue line that's on the chart here. And it's for data that is inside the Dow. You know, and it says there's this possibility that we're going to see this continue to run for longer than maybe, um, at least maybe longer than what I was anticipating. If this is going to happen, though, and this is what I'm taking a look at, the the focus right now for me, and it's really five five charts out here to focus on. The first being the New York Stock Exchange, which is what I have up on the screen. Yes, here. I see that. Yeah. 
And, you know, we've it, clearly the New York Stock Exchange has been in a long term downtrending uh, channel. And it's getting very close to testing the top of that channel. Now, whether it goes just slightly outside or not, that's not really a big deal. But if that previous chart that I put on my screen, which says, hey, the market could easily run longer, higher into the uh, into the end of April, uh, towards the end of April, then this clearly would have to go ahead and break this descending price channel. Right. Which would Steve, the first the first one is that when you say the end of April, so is that a time chart? It is. Um, if I, I'll put it back up on the uh, screen for you, I, I have it throughout the year. So I have a forecast over the last 84 years what the Dow does on average. But I, so, well, is it time we're talking uh, price? Time. Because you said time. Okay. Okay. Time. Cool. I got yeah, it. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Time. Now I just happen to show this in essence really through the early part of April. So I'm just really looking at it through the end of March. Yeah. No. I, I, another... I, I got it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, actually, another chart that says it goes all the way through the uh, May time frame. That doesn't mean we don't have, you know, pullbacks and things sure, of that sure, sort. Sure, right, right. But if that's going to happen, uh, because this is, uh, when I take a look at analogs, this is the this is the analog that the market is uh, following the most. I've taken a look at presidential elections, third, uh, fourth year of a second-term president, you know, the whole bit out here. This happens to be, I've looked at the 2007, 2008, I've looked at all of them. This happens to be the one that the market is following uh, the most as Closest, we speak right, right now. Yeah. Right. So, but, but here's the deal. We, we really get a signal, I think, when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Now, interestingly enough, New York Stock Exchange right now, and it's had a great uh, market breadth in it, really strong market breadth, stronger market breadth than we have seen in quite a long time out here. And so is it going to run into this uh, barrier? I, you know, I don't know. But you, I heard you talking about the ABCs out there, which, right. we so, which we so like to do, because we're trying to sell the D point. Really, that's, you know, that's our focus right now, is to try to figure out, you yeah. know, is this <laughs> one of these D points for us to focus? And in the S&P 500, I'll put the spies up, because that's easier for everybody to follow along with, you know, on their own systems. But, you know, it already did that confirming A to B equals CD with that swing point that was at the top of this consolidation level. I'm using the swing point, Tom, from February 22nd, yeah. which had volume of like 103 million shares. And okay. it was passed. It was passed with volume. It was passed with 110 on the 25th of February. It had 141 real conviction on March the 1st. But that one-to-one -one level is at the 2033 area. So kind of running, you know, equal with regard to that New York Stock Exchange into its potential first level of resistance. Um, if the New York Stock Exchange takes that out, area out, it looks to me like the uh, SPY heads up to probably the next area, maybe about the 208, 207 uh, type right. range out there. Um, and no reason to think that it can't, but, but we're getting close to these resistance areas where the market will, like you like to see, and I love it, squawk, walk, and talk out there. Right. You no, know, but... I, it's hard for me to see the market doing that without the Qs participating, which they haven't participated for, what, six, seven, eight trading sessions. Yeah, really. exactly. They haven't done anything right. since March 1st. But they do have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Okay. Because if I use that same February 22nd swing point that had 24 million shares, yeah. you know, that was passed with 37 million back on March the uh, 1st. So, uh, you know, and even on, on February 25th. So it says that we ought to see the Qs get up to that uh, 108 to 110 level. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the current weighting structure of Apple is inside of the QQQ. Is it, is it still in that, like, 10, 12, 10, 11, 12 you know, percent I range? I suspect it is because it has, hasn't moved much. Last I looked, it was 14 percent. And that was 14. when it was kind of <laughs> hanging at the same price. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if we look at Apple, it's it's basically done nothing. And right. today, I was really amazed during the show. Rarely do I look at Apple, um, you know, uh, during during the show. But talk about coming into a swing point with light volume. The March 4th uh, area has got 46 million shares today. I had to tap my computer to make sure it was correct. Only 19 million shares you know, as it's coming into that level. So in, in the diamonds, uh, they, you know, they're they're completing what looks like it's completing a one to one A to B equals C to, you know, it's had a nice confirmation in this 172. So so as I put all of this together, you know, I'll be watching as these first these one to ones, only 60 percent of the A to B equals C D patterns complete a, a one to one. So the other 40 percent are going to be some type of extension. But it's nice because when I take a look at it, there's really harmony here with regard to the chart patterns, whether it's the New York Stock Exchange or the four ETFs, uh, you know, the IWM, the Qs, the Diamonds, and the Spies out there. So I think that next week is going to be an 
equally interesting week as well for us to be uh, watching and trading. Yeah, and, you know, it, it's, it's set up, you know, folks, the, it's set up right into the Fed meeting, which is perfect, man. <laughs> oh, so there's a Fed meeting next week? Yeah, yeah. Oh, let, let me okay. just see. I, I believe it's, uh, let me get the state. So let's say Fed calendar. Well, well, well maybe. Yeah, maybe, March 16th. My, oh, there's going to be an announcement March 16th at 2, two o'clock. Right. Well, all, all we need to do is just tell the Fed to maybe invite as a guest host Mario Draghi, and then there will surely be some fireworks out yeah, there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all setting up. It's all uh, perfect. Uh, we'll see. You know, we, we know the areas that we're watching, and um, the queue is really interesting. It's, it's, it's amazing that the market has moved without the queues really doing anything. There's no doubt. The stage, Listen, yeah. folks, come over to our website at TFNN, go to newsletters, trading newsletters, can test drive Steve's news newsletter right now, Mastering Probability. You get all weekend to look at it, 30 days absolutely free. Steve, have a great weekend, safe weekend. Look forward to the show Monday. Take care. Bye-bye. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Commodity Solution CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to eight equally weighted commodities, including WTI crude oil, gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, corn, and sugar in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 70% per component, you could earn up to 70% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The April 14th funding deadline is quickly approaching, so hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the uh, Dow Industrials right now up 205, NASDAQ up 79, S&P's up 30. Let's go to our man Charlie in Framingham. Charlie, what's going on, brother? Hey there. Wonderful weather. It must be 85. <laughs> really? Today? Oh, that is crazy. No, no, not 85. No, no, no it's not 85, but it's definitely T-shirt weather. No, I, I mean, I know Boston broke records on uh, Wednesday. I, I read that. Yeah. They broke records on Wednesday. That's awesome for you folks. That's great. That's yeah. beautiful. Uh, anyway, uh, UNG, 
Okay. What's your thought? Let's take I'm a look. Make, so, I'm making a little bit of money. First, I'm going to pull up the natural gas contract. So this is what it trades off, folks. So the natural gas contract came off its lows. The low that was hit out here in this contract is the dollar seventy-three. We're at one ninety-one right now. And, you know, it's possible that this thing is off its lows. Uh, you will know in the first pullback. And specifically what you're looking for is that you're looking for a low volume pullback. Now, let's go over to the UNG. Um, you know, what you got with the UNG today, you know, it can pull back to, when I look at this, it can pull back to like, well, six, it's not that bad, 633 to 617. Now, you own this right now, Charlie, right? Yeah, I do. I yeah. do. I, I, think I mean, I could take a little bit of heat if I had to. No, but. and I, I think that's the way to trade this, man. I haven't traded the natural gas contract yet, Charlie, but I've, I've traded the natural gas contract, folks, a lot, meaning for years. Um, and I'm right. The only reason I haven't traded the last few days is that I'm trading something else, and I, I just forget about it, actually. But um, I, it's something I will, once it gets on my radar again, which is on my radar right now, I think we got uh, a bottom in there. You know, I, I like how it's acting. What I'd like to see, let me just get this up again, because what, what it has done, okay, so intraday, you know, what it's done, you know, you're getting these downdrafts still, you know, because on yesterday, they, they got this down pretty quick from $1.88 to $1.86. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, folks, but it is a natural gas. But they couldn't break the swing. They couldn't get it down, you know, a buck eighty. So I was like, okay, man, that's, you know, that's saying, that's saying someone else is sitting there buying it. Um, when you look at the, how it came off the bottom, you know, even on a dead cat bounce, you know, you can, you can get... 211, which is a big move, man. You know, so that's the technical okay. aspect. The fundamental aspect gets pretty cool, folks. And this is what it is. Natural gas is so deviant, it's unbelievable. The the aspect of you think that natural gas always runs in the winter, but it doesn't. Where it actually runs is this time of period, the shoulder period, coming between the winter and the summer. And what it's about, and this is going to be really wild because. You know, you just heard Charlie, he's in Framingham, which is right next to Boston. If Boston and New York, folks, get 100-degree weather, okay, natural gas will go through the roof in the summer. And, you know, the reason being is that you get the plants, you get, you get huge amounts of, um, there she goes, sorry about that. You get huge amounts of um, electrical plants that, you know, basically have to get the air conditioning going. It costs a fortune, man. Uh, now, that's not yeah. even saying that anything happens in the Gulf of Mexico. So I think I'd hang there, Charlie, you know, knowing that okay. you're going to take, you know, 30, 40 cents worth of heat. You know, that, well, they, yeah, that's one way to do it. Another way you could do it is you could say, listen, move that out for the weekend. And, you know, natural gas numbers don't come out till Thursday. You know, Monday to Tuesday, you probably can get back in at the same price. Do you know what I'm saying? Or you might get in 20 or 30 cents lighter. Do those figures come out every Thursday? Is that yeah, every Thursday. Like, oh. Every Thursday, and they move the market, man. You know, they've been moving it down for the last two and a half years, but they move the market. Yeah. Now, what, know. what? This is the deviance. The deviance right now is going to be really wild because you know you would think that because you, this is like no man's land, like for gas, but when you. As I said earlier, when you look back, this is the time that it moves, man. But it, it's moving in, in anticipation of what they think natural gas, uh, what traders think is going to the summer is going to bring. So. Yeah, you always provide great information and things that I people never think of. I'm sure this is cool. Thank well, you. I'm, I'm thank you so much, Charlie. Appreciate it. Appreciate you growling a problem with us out here. And you know what is cool, you know, and folks, I really appreciate everyone being out there because we wouldn't have a business without being out there and then what that also means is that we wouldn't be able to do so much work because we're getting rewarded for work and all you know that there's a whole cool thing that happens and in that context I want to bring something up okay because there's a for any of you folks that own pipeline companies out there there was a, there was a really there was a great article in the in the journal and I, you should hunt this article and read it it's really important because they left one part of it out so this is what happened and this is really intriguing because when 
I was first doing the Tiger First Mortgage Program, there were many folks that, you know, they like dividend stocks. We pay 5%. You know, uh, what happens with the 5% deal is that um, it's secured by the real estate and all that. But I had plenty of other clients that, you know, had pipe deals. And they're saying, hey, you know, this is a dividend stock that's paying 7%, 8%, 9%, you know, the 5% doesn't work for us. And I said, that's fine. That's, you know, I said, but I was explaining at that point that the pipeline deals can go up and down in value, you know, never really thinking that they'll crash, okay? Well, they crashed, okay? But that's not the story here. This is what the story is. Because these master pipeline Master limited partnerships, folks. What happens is that you get the upside, but what happens, which there'll be a million suits over it because more than likely the downside was never basically explained correctly, is that the downside is when and if these companies get forgiveness or debt or go BK, which many of them are going to be doing, you get the forgiveness of debt. And so guess what? That means that you have a tax bill. That means that you lost money in the principal, and that means that that tax bill is also gonna come due is that you're gonna have to pay tax to the IRS for something you never even made. Okay, so if you own one of them, search the Wall Street Journal first. Now, what they forgot to put in is this. When you own, this is what happens, folks. The way that the master partnerships work, or any partnership works, if you own it, you get hit with the tax. Guess what? You can sell it. Now, if you sell it, of course, you're going to take the hit on the principal. But taking the hit on the principal is different than taking the hit on the principal and taking the tax hit. Now, your risk there would be that they all come back and they get higher. You know, so you get you get to straighten, you, you got to walk through this yourself. But if you own it, don't think that you're just trapped like rats at this point, because you're not. OK, you're you're you have a piece of paper. And you have to be the owner of that certificate or that stock when, in fact, they go BK or get a forgiveness of debt. That's, that's the, the technical aspect of how those are set up. So, and, you know, search the article and read the article and then search the rest of it, what, to which, which I'm saying about how they run so you can get your own kind of deal set up because it's going to be not only a problem, it's going to be a very large problem, and I, I suspect two or three years from now we're going to see a million suits inside those master partnerships because of the fact that they'll, the, I'm sure there's plenty of broker deals that sold those to people, you know, and they hopefully they gave them prospectus, and I believe they did, because that's, a, now, and, and you know what the difference is there? I would say that that was that was that wasn't done intentionally because it's like it, it, you know that's like not selling a bad mortgage they, they weren't doing that that's just that that was that's part of the deal though stay right there folks we'll come right back tfnn is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen john logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the taz profile scanner plus and right now you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting tfnn.com and providing us your name and email address the taz profile scanner plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. 
For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN dot com now tom takes your phone calls now, now. toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 tom o'brien welcome back folks we have the uh, dow industrials right now up 206 nasdaq is up 80 s and p's are up uh 31 percentage wise this is what you have happening out here folks is that the dow is up 1.2 percent s and p's 1.5 nasdaq 1.2 in europe they had a heck of a run out here uh you had the FTSE up 1.7 percent uh the cat in france was up 3.2 the dax in germany was up 3.5 spain was up uh 4.8 that's a mind blower um Bottom line is that let's go look at the DAX for a second uh, because I don't believe it got it to its high from yesterday, but it was up pretty good. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it'll go hit that baby. Um, and this, this correlation here inside the DAX also, folks, is this, is that the correlation inside the DAX, we did on yesterday, or yesterday, we did 177 million shares. You got to uh, 99.95. Uh, the swing point is 98.95. 99 that's an abc up so the dax is doing an abc up. now this is a smaller one um but that correlation also sets up that well let's put it this way it, it gets more probability that we keep going higher and that is just absolutely wild uh if we go take a look at the trend and the tick readings out here because the let's just see this baby there we go get up here There we close that one. Okay. So the trend is reading out. See, it, it, it was pretty cool is this. Because this wasn't, it, it, when you look at a chart, it looks like a one-way move, but it isn't because it's been so choppy, right? And because of that, on Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday, the trend came in at 1.78. Wednesday come in at 1.17. The 1.878 and 1.17, you know, basically keeps that a high trend. So what that specifically means on a longer basis is that the greed is still not here, even though we're up higher. If we go over to the tick and we take a look at the tick, because what I'm looking for you now, folks, is that I'm looking for basically signs that you're near the top. And if we go to the tick, the tick's not there also. So now let's go back to the S&P. And we're on, let me look at this calendar for a second. This is gonna be cool, man. This is gonna be just like, if, just gotta be ready to flip everything around. Okay, so we'll go back to the calendar. March 16th, oh, this is pretty cool. See, the Fed's gonna set it up just for all of us for that pot of gold for March 17th. That's how this is getting set up now. So watch, we come back to work Monday morning. That's the 14th. So the 14th and 15th, the market has a chance to run. The 16th, the Fed comes out at 2 o'clock and throws water on the market. <laughs> That'd be sick. But that, 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 that could be the setup. Oh, my God. And so with, with the, throwing the water would be this. So, so picture this. What, you, what you'd want to look at is this. We're at 
64 right now. This, this market's going to run right into the close. In fact, it's going to be really wild if, in fact, the market can get the, the volume again. And it, it, it might, the way this volume's coming in right now. And that being said, so picture, you got Monday and Tuesday and even Wednesday morning for the market to run. But let's say Monday and Tuesday. The market absolutely could run, let's see, three, six, oh yeah, six points. It can run, it can, two, by Tuesday night, we can be up at the highs that were generated out here you know, the high of the market thus far is November 3rd. That's 211. But we could be hanging at basically 209. And if we're up there and the vo the, you finish the ABC structure on the way up and the volume dies in the ground, on the, on the vine, and now this is the kicker. This is what you want to correlate to, is that you want to go over to the bond because the 10-year the treasury is an ABC down. It's a confirmed one. And what I'd like to see there... Well, I'd particularly like to see some short bonds too, but what you'd want to see is 126. Now, it's a long move down because if you got all of that happening simultaneously, that is where I think the flip would come. Because my take on this, even though someone put something in my food to get all these bullhorns out in me, I know they must have, they must have spiked my food. <laughs> um, the bottom line is, is that I, my take is that this is still a very bad market that wants to go dramatically lower, okay? And if we put this on a weekly, what you're gonna see is that we've been in this huge consolidation. And we've been in this consolidation for almost three years. So this is dangerous in the fact, so when I bring this back, this consolidation started in April, now it'd be two years, April of 2014. And what we have is that each and every time we're at these lows, the first low was established October of 2014, $181, 1.3 billion shares traded. Next low, August of this year, 1.6 billion shares traded, 182 low. Next one, January, 1.1 billion shares, 185 low. So. Those are the lows. When you go look at the highs, this is what you have. First high had some decent volume, $212. We had $1.2 billion. Next high, we tested that. Look at this one, $345 million. Next high, we tested $600 million. Next high, we tested $466. And then we tested with $670. So your correlation when you put those channels up there is that this is going to test the lows one more time. And we'll see if there's an expansion of volume. Now, I'll get really deviant with everyone. If there's not an expansion of volume, as you come back down to this 181, guess what? The market's not going to be ready. And this is why. So check this out. When I just went through all of these, you, you, got, you saw what we have. Your highest volume was August of 2015. When we tested that, if you remember... I said we came down way too fast because it wouldn't have the energy, and that's what we did. So when we came down way too fast, that test was on lighter volume. That's what this bounce is all about. So after we get to these highs, you know, it's how we come back down into those levels. You break those levels, and guess what? You're going to take, you take the bottom of those levels, which is 181. You take the top of those levels, which is 213, and what's that, 19, 29, that's uh, 30, 20, yeah, that's 34 points. You take 34 points away from uh, 181. You take that away from 181, guess what? You're hanging out there at 1,400 somewhere, you know? So bottom line is that um, that's, <laughs> that's what we're looking at. And listen, folks, you can have a field day with this. And as I said, if you're a long-term investor, um, what I've seen is this, whether you're long or short, the market always seems to give you really three times to get in or get out. It just does, you know? And the, if I'm right in the context, guess what? You're gonna be up at the highs again. And if you're a long-term investor, what you should be doing is that you have plenty of time to have this thought process right now. And I want you to think about how you felt on August 20th. And you say, oh no. Because we all, you feel different now. You, if you're, you would, it would totally make sense. You have to make a choice up at those levels. Do I want to put a stop in or not? And then 
I'd equate that to if we go down, how am I going to feel versus we go up. If you remember something, it, I think everything's about not how much you can lose, not what you can make. You're always going to make money, folks. It depends on how much you lose making the money. You stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. Dow up 211, Nasdaq up 83, S&P's up 32. We're going to be right back. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we have the uh, Dow of 213, NASDAQ up 83, s and is up 32. Let's go over to that gold contract. They're hitting the gold contract uh, coming into the close out here. Now, the pit's already closed, folks. So this is electronic trading. Uh, gold right now is down 22 bucks. You're at 1250. You've done uh, 212,000, 221,000 contracts. But I want to show you what it's doing here because it's pretty cool, actually. It's real cool. Um, you know, in the Nadex bull bear binary option hour this morning, my son Tommy, Daryl Martin, um, and I was looking at this, and we were looking that, you know, the first get go down was 1257. Um, this is coming into where it had the up thrust from yesterday. And it's, guess what? It's coming in with dramatically lighter volume because once the pit closes, folks, you just can't get big volume coming into it. Uh, so you, you're coming in, and they'll, they'll bring this down coming right into the close because they, they got a couple of folks on the wrong side of this market here. But bottom line, that, what you're going to see uh, right now, I, I wish there was a, like another half hour or, yeah, all you need is about another half hour of trading. Um, this is coming into the swing. Now, the swing it's coming into had 13,000 contracts, and <laughs> you're coming into the swing right now. Let me just see. Yeah, you'll have all of the 2,600 contracts. That's how that's set up. Um, if we go over to the GLD, we take a look at that GLD. 
what you're going to see at the GLD, you're coming down, you're at, uh, you're coming down at 9 million shares and you're coming into 18 million. Yeah, so same, same type of setup, meaning that um, you get a retracement into signs of strength with dramatically lighter volume. You know, we'll see whether it, it rejects that level. Uh, when you do the same correlation, and that's what's so cool, you jump over to the dollar, dollar hasn't moved, okay? And the dollar, by the way, the dollar gold correlation is still there. Dollar, gold is priced in dollars, that's it. Bottom line, you know, dollar goes lower, gold goes higher. Um, what has happened because of the fact of so many countries going negative rates, you can see why gold as a currency and a store of value uh, is, can have a higher demand. Because if we were in Europe right now, uh, bottom line, let's say you're in Europe, you get 100 grand, you're putting it in the bank, well, guess what? They're going to charge you to put it in the bank. You get 100 ounces of gold, 50 ounces of gold, guess what? You just hold them. You still, you're not getting charged. In fact, you get an, you're getting an upcharge. You're making money on that deal. Uh, the negative interest rates across the world, I suspect, are going to put more upside, not only in the gold market, in the hard asset market. Your houses are going to be worth more money, folks, just because of the trip that picture whatever your house is worth. If you put that in the bank, you, they, you had, you'd be paying a fine every single month. What, what has happened is that worldwide, not in the United States yet, thank God, there's a phenomenon of that they're taxing cash. Um, the real question is, is that, okay, is that going to come here? I don't think it's going to come here. I, I don't see that because I, our bonds still want lower price, you know. But then I say, okay, why, why not? And like, how does this work? So this is, this is the next flip around in your head you can, we, we should probably have for about a year, year and a half. Because this absolutely is something that has not happened in the past. You know, many times you can say, oh, this, this is different this time. This, I'm not talking about a different scenario. The, the, the scenario of negative interest rates hasn't happened. You know, if we had mortgages, so check this out. This is pretty wild. When Draghi went negative more yesterday, mortgages over in Europe that are tied to LIBOR, right now the bank sends the mortgage E a check back. Now, not for the principal, but for the interest. Let's say that let's let's say you had a, a, a LIBOR plus one or two. Now that's in a negative. So if it's in a negative, even let's say it's got, it's probably only negative by two tenths of one percent or something. Bottom line, you get a check for the interest instead of paying for the interest. Think about that over the weekend. Always remember, folks. Whatever we think, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. And whatever you want in life, folks, visualize it like a nice big motion picture. Step into it. Take ownership of it. Fly with it. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a great weekend. Safe weekend. Look forward to speaking right back here Monday morning.